constructivism and educational technology. Constructivism is a learning theory that focuses on the learner constructing their own knowledge and understanding of the world. So therefore their knowledge is personal, it's objective, and it's based on their own experiences and social and cultural contexts. Social constructivist theory is a sub theory of constructivism and the role of others in the occurrence of social interaction informing knowledge is key. Culture and context are important, especially social context. Reality, knowledge and learning are three aspects of social constructivist learning. Reality is believed to be formed and shared with others. It's made by the individual. Knowledge is created by the individual as a result of interaction between others and their environment, their social and cultural factors. And learning is believed as a social process that it takes place within a social context. So there are two main forms of constructivism, psychological and social. In psychological constructivism, the focus is on the individual and how they construct meaning. In social constructivism, the, the focus is on the individual social context. So those familiar with Vygotsky's learning theory will know that interaction between both individual and social factors are recognized as important for knowledge and cognitive growth. So in constructivism, the learner is perceived as an active participant. They are capable of self-regulating and engaging in metacognition, so thinking about their learning. Social interaction is key as well as the idea that the individual is capable of finding out information and knowledge on their own and being a independent learner. Two forms of constructivist teaching strategies are discovery learning and inquiry learning. Discovery learning involves a student changing factors in their learning space, experimenting and finding out connections between factors. In inquiry learning, students form their own questions, ask them and find out the answers themselves. Churchill says there's some other forms of teaching strategies being real life activities, um, reflection, group work, students presenting their own personal knowledge and engaging in scaffolding and guided practice. Darianka and Jones outline the teaching and learning cycle, which adopts scaffolding practice to assist students to become independent learners in literacy. So the idea of students being independent and constructing their own meaning is central to constructivism. So why do we need technology in the classroom? It's an ICT capability in the Australian curriculum. And in addition, there's the idea presented by Prinsky 2005 that students in these days are digital natives, they're born within the techno technological advancements and use, um, and they use it in their everyday life, so therefore it should be implemented within their learning environments. The three tools that will be discussed are Inspiration9, Poll Everywhere, and YouTube. Inspiration9, Janu 2006, says, is a brainstorming software that enables students to create concept maps and plan diagrams so students visually display their ideas and supports in a visual diagram. By using this tool, they're actively involved in constructing their knowledge and they're given the opportunity to think about how they might implement their idea into a solution or a response to an activity or problem. So we have Inspiration9 here. We can see that it supports the use of concept mapping and other graphic organizers for students to present their ideas in a visual display which enables them to share their ideas with others as well. So how does it support the constructivist approach? So furthermore, I believe that the student is implementing their own ideas and thoughts to the construction of a visual diagram, supporting the principle of the theory that learners are responsible for constructing their own meaning. It also supports discovery learning strategy as a student is making connections between various ideas and engaging in the process of making meaning. It also allows a student to present their own personal perspective on a topic and share that with others, which is key to constructivism, social interaction and sharing of knowledge. So it supports and responds to the needs of diverse learners in terms of those that learn through visual learning. So it's a learning style where the learner better understands information when ideas and concepts, etc., are presented in a diagram. So students can organise information, and analyse it much easier. Um, visuals mainly exist as a graphic organiser, which research outlined by Hall and Shragman show that it helps students get a better understanding of a topic and it also increases their vocabulary knowledge. In addition, the learner can implement their own ideas and therefore it suits the abilities of a vast range of students and they can all access the curriculum and the activity regardless of their learning ability. So how can it be implemented safely? It's a safe tool, which I believe is appropriate for a classroom environment. To ensure if any tool is implemented safely, I would first check the website and ensure all pages and links are appropriate. 
In addition, I'd get students to sign a consent form to ensure that they are aware of the expectation when using technology in the classroom and that it's used responsibly and for educational purposes. Poll Everywhere is the second tool. Poll Everywhere is a tool that enables students to make their own poll and ask questions, share them with an audience and responses are shown on a chart. So we can see this is a tool here. So essentially the steps are students prepare questions, they present it to their peers and engage in discussion and then they can interpret the results further. Um, so we can see here it supports visual use as well and you've got a question and answer social interaction taking place. Okay, so Janu states that central to constructivism is students interacting with their environment, making interpretations, which occurs with, through this tool. Uh, in addition, she states that constructivism involves students acquiring knowledge through practical experiences and then reflecting on such knowledge. And that certainly takes place with the use of this tool. So it supports constructivist approach as students are social, um, they're taking part in a social interaction which is key principle of constructivism and the poll only works through the collaboration of others. It supports inquiry-based learning as a student is making their own questions and gaining answers. They're learning how to learn through the use of asking questions and seeking answers. So how does it support the needs of diverse learners? So students can choose their own learning questions and how they wish to present it, supporting students at different levels of ability, supports different learning styles. So you've got charts and diagrams for visual learners. You've got auditory learners are supported through discussion. Print out of results can support students who learn better by reading and writing and kinesthetically there are students who can use a practical device to provide a response and they can also um, engage in social interaction and movement around the room in terms of discussing and sharing responses with their peers. So prior to taking part in the poll, students should be informed of what it's about, give consent to participate, which upholds an ethical standard. The teacher should check each poll before presenting to the class to ensure it's um, appropriate. And again, students should adhere to um, consent form uh, and the use of technology in the classroom. YouTube is the third educational tool. It's an online interactive website where individuals create, view and share videos with others in a social network. Um, that's where it takes place. It's supported by the collaboration of others, which is mentioned is key principle of constructivist theory. It promotes exploration, which is another key principle. So students learn by actively partaking in exploring and making meaning. If set with the task of making their own video, students are actively engaged in making, in finding out information and presenting it. In addition, if a teacher were to share a video with the class to support their learning their teaching practice, it supports the key principle of social constructivist learning, being that knowledge is accumulated and gained and learning occurs through and with the involvement of others. And that ultimately shapes and instructs our reality. Um, so we're probably familiar with YouTube here. It's We've searched how to write an essay and there's a vast variety of videos supporting that idea. Okay, so how does it support needs of diverse learners? So it supports visual and kinesthetic learners as it's visually dominant and if making their own video, students will be actively participating. Um, in addition, students have the autonomy to select the content and customize how they wish to present their knowledge, so enables all students to participate and actively engage in learning the curriculum. Plantis and Co present the idea of different modes of meaning, being, for example, written, visual, gestural, uh, etc., and that ideas and knowledge can be presented in more than one way, which is a doorway for diverse learners. So this is a, this idea is identified as part of the multiliteracies theory. YouTube supports this theory as there are different ways of presenting and learning knowledge, as we can see through the many videos on the one topic. So Kalantis and Cope also describe the construct of redesign, which refers to individuals interpreting and presenting meaning in a way that makes sense to them. And YouTube enables that as well. So with YouTube, the idea of multi-modes of meaning and continuous redesign of knowledge concerning the multiliteracies theory and the idea of constructivism, whereby there's a social interaction and there's a subjective response to meaning making and how it's shared, um, that's highly evident in this platform. Okay, so how can it be implemented safely? Well, it needs to be carefully monitored in a school environment due to the vastness of content and knowledge. Students um, can be monitored through the use of monitor net support screen monitoring. So teachers can easily monitor their students when their screens are in use. Consent forms to agree to use technology safely and responsibly. And in addition, prior to uploading the video, teachers should be um, checking that the content is appropriate. 
So therefore, that's the conclusion of the video. We have references here and constructivism was discussed in the classroom in relation to three educational tools that support constructivist learning and enable diverse learners to partake in learning in, in a safe and ethical manner.